All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Strabica Trade Group. And today is, what is today? Today is, is May 17th, Wednesday. Themes of the day we will get to in just a second. Risk disclaimer first, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer there. Um, of course, if ever the video is a little bit blurry, um, just give it more time to render. YouTube does take an extra uh, amount of time to do the uh, high definition version of the video. So if you ever see it not high def, just uh, close it and give it another 15 minutes or so. Um, so let me get to the themes of the day because uh, you know another interesting day um, it was a strong breath day today. Um, finally had the banks wake up and um, and they really outperformed. So, you know, before we get into kind of the chart review and of course uh, the individual names that I want to go over and, and some of the trades, you know, some of my trades, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I just, I think, you know, from how we wrapped up the day yesterday, you just kind of have to uh, remember that this market is, you know, continuing to kind of go with this back and forth price action. Um, you know, you really want to have a, 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 a reference of um, risk management. You know, risk management is ultimately, um, you know, the one of the most important things, strong risk management system in trading. Um, and then just to kind of understand, like, just to, to not get super frustrated um, in this market. And if you do, you know, the best, best thing that I, you know, after I'm done with my video at the end of the day, and wrapping up, um, I exercise. Like I go out and I'm in New York City, so I, I ride my bike, um, you know, and I, I don't ride my bike for 25 miles after work, but I, you know, I get at least five miles in, you know, after after the close. And, you know, by the time I get outside and kind of, you know, think about that, um, you know, it really kind of helps to kind of get over um, whatever situation, because you're not going to get every trade right in this market, the way that um, it operates on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, that's one of the major takeaways. Of course, I can go, you know, into some of, you know, today's trades. And, um, you know, obviously, today was a really nice day to be long and to have some positions on or, you know, maybe to even kind of add risk. Um, it was a nice trending day. But you have to kind of stay grounded and recognize that we're just not seeing every day like this. Um, so I will go over a couple of things. Um, you know, clearly, we've had a market where, um, the queues have been the major outperforming index, but, you know, I think you have to be open to, you know, that there could be some profit taking, um, you know, depending on, you know, macro events and some other things going on, um, you know, and possibly a little bit of rotation, you know, into um, some of other areas of the market. So I, I will get to that in just a second. But um, first things first, bringing up the S&P chart. Um, we've been in value now for a couple of weeks um, and we are now right at the top of value. So we did close basically right around that top of value for the month. So is that significant that we couldn't that we did not break out for the for the um, for the month? Uh, it, it could be. I mean, even if we did close slightly above the valuary for the month, I still would have said, you know, you got to kind of have to give it another day um, to see where it is. But I do find it interesting that um, we close right there. Um, we close right at that top of value. So what's nice is to understand that there's levels, right? So if you want to push from here right and and if you're looking for for finally this market to kind of pick a direction which could be higher based basically on the way the way it closes um tomorrow we've we've got to get above that level and and stay above it and if it doesn't you know then you know that we're back into the kind of regular chop right and you've got to kind of manage you know um you know how many positions that you have on and the size of your positions so that when we do have a little bit of volatility or a down day that you're not getting you know, killed on those days and you're not giving back, um, you know, gain, you know, a good portion of your gains, right? That's what it's all about because, you know, this market and, and just looking at these candles and back and forth price action, that um, that's the whole key is that when there's not the momentum or um, when there's, when it's not a great day for, for trading, it, it's not to, you know, give, the, the goal is not to give back, um, you know, the days where you are accumulating, um in your account. So um, on the positive side, so why, you know, while we did not break above the value area for the month, uh, we did break a value, break above value for the week and um, your support. So now that we're above this 4156, now you can say, hey, if we check back by chance um, to 4156, right, that could be a, an area to possibly play a bounce if we do come back. All right. Again, always important to kind of have those scenario analysis cues, um, I, I, you know, just unbelievable, you know, up another 1.2% for the day. 
Um, I think at this point, if we look at the weekly chart, I mean, we are running right smack into that resistance that we've been talking about now for a few weeks, um, 332.31. So again, you know, that's why I kind of bring up the possibility of a little bit of rotation or profit taking in some of these names that have really been running and, and um, you know, really have had great performance over the last uh, over the last couple of weeks. You know, that this is where there's been, you know, alpha uh, in the market, but 332. 31 and of course this is a weekly bar so we're not done yet but really that's um that's going to be interesting um and then finally what i found really interesting what you know what i found really interesting today was what happened in the small caps and then you know the one of the biggest weights in the small caps is the is the bank so of course we'll look at that chart next but um we did finally break into the value area and this is the first time that uh we did get above the 50 day moving average since all the way in the beginning of march right um the last time that we were above the 50 day moving average actually was back in here um, and that was all the way back on three three, right? When when the whole situation um, happened with the banks. So I mean, to me, that's notable, right? And I would be looking to play um, along here, um, you know. And again, it doesn't have to be something that you're trading for like short term, but you know, you've got a level. You know, now you know where things can could potentially work, right? Which is basically against this 174 level. If we break back below, right? Then you know that, um, you know, this group goes back to its underperformance and, um, you know, just can't can't maintain a change in direction. But it is possible that this is a double bottom, right? And we could begin to kind of move from here. Um, for now, the resistance is going to be 179.10 uh, to the upside. And, and it will be probably a bit difficult because you're going to have to fight through some overhead supply, such as 177.41. Um, and that's, the, that's really the first area of overhead supply. Um, and that's a virgin point of control back from a couple of weeks ago. If you don't know what that means, um, please go ahead and click on uh, my pin tweet and you can learn about uh, value areas and virgin point of controls, which um, I'll bring up a couple other ones um, now that we're through the, the index review. Um, bonds, you know, I, I was very worried to, to start the day that um, we were going to see a further breakdown in bonds. Um, I am still worried about this. I don't like the look of this chart. Um, this is the 30 year bond uh, futures slash ZB. You know, so again, it's not everything is perfect um, because uh, to me, this looks like a head and shoulders, um, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And I've covered this in a few of these videos, but if it continues to slip, right, and breaks this low, um, you know, meaning, you know, rates will go higher, you know, you might see some areas come under some pressure. But we'll wait for that um, and see how that if, if we do get a break um, further and take out this week's lows. Um, also, you know, important to kind of look at UUP, right? Notice we got right up to that 2222 level, right? This is the version point of control that I've been pointing out um, that we could rise up to. So it's kind of a toppy looking candle right at that uh, version point of control takeout. So that's where I thought we would get to. Um, and because a lot of times we do, price will get up there and then get rejected or faded. Um, so far, it could be a fade. Um, so I think that that's good news if we kind of top out at this 28, 22 level. If we don't, right, and the, the dollar continues to move uh, and trend uh, as it is now above all the um, above all the short term moving averages, then also that could be uh, a a, um, a warning signal. All right. So again, something there's definitely these things to monitor. I mentioned I would talk about the the first sector that we'll talk about, of course, is this KRE. Um, I just tweeted this out a little while ago, but yes, this is to me it's a it's the first character change that we've seen um, since the beginning of March when this has uh, has fallen apart. Why is it a character change? Well, the first thing that we noted a couple of weeks ago was this big volume, right? I do refer to this as capitulation volume. It's the highest volume that we've seen in the KRE regional banking ETF. Um, so when you see a hammer bar on that type of volume, yes, I associate, you know, and again, I'm not looking at the specific, you know, definition that it has to be capitulation, but just using a little bit of traders feel and that's what it felt like to me on that day. However, you didn't really get any follow through, you know, so you had to kind of be patient with this. We did start to get above the five period moving average the other day, which was also a sign that something was changing. And now it's the first time that we're above the 20 day moving average since this whole thing started. So again, 
first first candle above there. And you know, um, these moves, uh, it's, it's funny, somebody was mentioning this to, this to me on Twitter, and it was regarding something else. And um, they were saying, hey, well, you know, why are you telling us that there's call buying in this? It was something that was up 2% for the day. I'm like, because it's the first time that if we've that it hasn't done anything yet. Um, and I think I was talking of going back to the IWM chart. They're like, why are you telling me now, you know, that there's call buying? How is that supposed to help me? Well, we've seen a lot of put buying in IWM. So I, I think it's a possible character change. Um, and if you look, you, you, you didn't really miss anything because this thing hasn't done anything, right? Sometimes traders get super focused like on the day and looking at the percentage change for the day. But really, you know, making money in this market, in my opinion, it, it, it revolves around a trend, right? And more than just one day performance, right? You, you need to see different moves that, that, you know, you need to see moves that are just a, a lot bigger than 2%. Um, so case in point, right? Um, this NVIDIA, you know, I've been hearing about this. This is going to spend a quick 30 seconds and vent here for a second. I hope you don't mind. But for the last couple of months, I've been told time and time again on Twitter, oh my God, NVIDIA is so expensive. I would never go long here. You know, and this was months ago, right? Oh my God, like this is such a big short because it's all right, because it's gone up so much this year. It doesn't matter how much a stock has gone up year to date, right? Get that out of your head. I did this, I, I went over this a couple of times in a webinar that um, I, I did with, with a few other traders. It doesn't matter how much a stock is up year to date. It manages what it matters what the trend looks like if the name is trending and what's ahead of the stock. Right? This is the stock that's been focusing on the big trend of AI. It makes everything that goes into AI. So that said, my price target that I listed, I think back on April 1st, um, you know, was 300 bucks. So I took profits in this in my trading account. I still have it on in a longer term account, but um, this was my target and I decided to take my profits today. But again, you know, I, I, you know, I try to teach traders this all the time, right? People, they, the newer traders, they look at how much a stock is up and they say, huh, that shouldn't be up this much year to date, right? Keep in mind, if you want to, if you really want to put things in perspective and do this, you know, looking back, it still isn't above 346. Um, but again, that doesn't, that doesn't matter um, in terms of like where the stock was a couple of years ago. It's where it's going forward, right? Um, so again, please don't get focused on, geez, it's up this much year to date. That shouldn't be, right? Um, and it's expensive, right? This company has always been expensive since it IPO'd or the, right after it IPO'd, right? So, um, but I, again, try to get some of these things that are just bad practices um, or trying to anticipate when there's a breakdown in a stock when when it hasn't happened yet um, is some of the things that you learn over time as, as being a trader. Um, a couple other names that we talked about right lamb research right this i also took a profit uh my profit target here this was right at um uh 566 i or five excuse me 567 right that is um what i was looking for and again i just put this trade on two days ago so this is one hell of a move that happened um you know right in uh right in there uh sorry let me just pause this one second all right, and here's our um, Slack room. Um, here's where you could see all the trades, you know, real time as I do them and as I execute them. Um, I always will send, you know, whenever I'm entering to a trade, that we also have a charts swing trade setups channel where I provide some context commentary about why I'm getting into the trade and, and so on and so forth, right? And of course, in our trading room, um, I also provide that context as well, right? Broadcom was a trade that I got into yesterday. Really nice move again, up 16 bucks today. I'm still long this one, but now I've taken a couple targets. So, I mean, the semis have been nothing short of amazing the last couple of days. Um, and again, you can't be in every single one of them. This one had a monster move. Um, I looked at this one at the end of the day yesterday. I didn't pull the trigger because I was already holding three of them. So I, I didn't want to do a, a fourth in the group. Um, Rambus, I, I actually added today into some strength. Um, this is a name that I've really liked. We saw that call activity at the end of the day yesterday um, just kind of gave me a sense. And I bought this on the, it was down um, when I bought it today. So um, nice to see it finish like that. Um, really impressive. 
Um, some other names, um, you know, I think people, you know, Tesla, very interesting um, for the day. It still is a very tough looking chart, um, but maybe it can kind of turn, right? Again, it's, it is a play like on, um, you know, maybe it's a little bit direct, uh, or, sorry, sorry, indirect um, in terms of AI, because I don't think they're there yet. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't fade, you know, to, um, Elon is not somebody that I fade. I've got a lot of respect for him and what he's accomplished at Tesla. So, you know, I would watch the 50 day moving average here. It's managed to kind of hang in here on the bottom of value. This was a really tough day. I, I actually um, was long on this day. This kind of hurt me a little bit, um, but um, but not that bad. More disappointed that I didn't get the move that I was looking for um, than actual P&L. But, um, but yeah, I would watch to see if we could get above the 50-day um, the moving average. Also, um, you know, sometimes you can kind of, as we went over in yesterday's video, you can kind of see a little bit of hints of what's going on on the one-hour chart. And if you like this, you can trade it versus 172. Right. That's that's very close by. You know where the trade is going to work in the short term. You know where it's not above value. It's trending back inside value. It's back into the range. All right. Um, a few other names I could I could spend a lot of time talking about names um, today. But Salesforce is another name that I've had on for for a while. Very close to taking um, again, virgin point of control coming up here, right? So it's going to have earnings. Um, I've got one more target to go, and I'll look to take this off at 213, um, if possible, right? But again, I've already locked in profits on this, uh, good profits on this trade. Um, switching up a little bit, something a little bit different. This is GE Healthcare. Kind of, you know, this was a, had a really nice trend. Remember, it's a newer company. It was a spinoff from GE, right? It went kind of ballistic into the report, um, went a little bit too far, sold off. This is sometimes what we see after earnings kind of came in here, the dip, try, try to hold the, the 50 day moving average. It didn't turn up, gave that last washout. Right. And now, uh, you know, probably washed out some people uh, on this move and is now fighting back and now has recouped all those moving averages. You could trade that one versus 7862. Um, Shopify. Right. This is another, you know, begin to kind of look at some of these names that popped on earnings. Um, this is one to watch for tomorrow. I did start a position in this earlier today. So you got a nice hammer bar. Now you just needed to regain that five period moving average. So, um, you know, whenever I see something like this and it hasn't really confirmed yet, um, I always go in with a starter position um, to kind of get get a feel um, for the name and to try to maybe catch it early. But um, I don't go in with a large position until I get the um, the confirmation. The home builders, what can you say? Um, you know, just powering through. We talked about them yesterday. Again, it's not all tech. Um, the home builders have actually been, I think, have maybe performed better um, in some aspects. Um, they've just been just con very consistent, um, trending all the way here in this year. Um, so Dior Hart Horton, remember, had some good earnings. They've kind of spent some time, you know, slower mover, not as fast as a growth name, you know, as a, as a small cap growth name, but still acting really well. Um, a couple other names that I wanted to go over. Um, this is a tough name to trade. I wish they would have a split because it's tough to trade a $2,000 stock, but I would watch Chipotle tomorrow, um, see if it can break above this 20 or stay above 2059, right? And it may be working on a next leg higher. Again, I love the sideways consolidation. Um, you have to be patient for these, but when they go, sometimes, you know, they can get really exciting. Um, and I see a venom up there at 2113 um, if it catches some momentum. Um, I also really liked what some of the industrials, right? It talked about possible rotation. Um, I did take a trade in Boeing today, right? There's a VPOC up here, which is, this is all I'm aiming for in this trade is 212. That lines up with the top of value, um, which is also 212 for the month. Again, you know, maybe it can finally break out of this range. For now, I'm just trading this range. Um, Caterpillar too, like, you know, these, some of these names have just been left for dead. Um, it did not break into the value area, but something to kind of keep on your radar, see if it can break above 213. Again, a lot of times it's just watching, right? And, and waiting for the right um, setup to occur. And if it doesn't, you move on and you go to another name because there's so many other names out there. This is one, uh, another one that had strong earnings. Let's see if it can kind of push um, through here. Um, it's an, that, um, this is another measurement um, instrument company. I believe that they are also involved 
in aviation. Uber do not have a position in it, but um, you know this is another one that growth traders like. Um, let's see if it can get above same thing five period moving average, um, similar setup to what I just showed in uh, Shopify. Um, a couple other different ones. Uh, well, SMCI um, talk about a beast of the stock. You know, at this point, you probably want. We've seen a lot of um, longer dated call positioning in this one. Um, let's see if we could maybe see an inside day for this one. But wow. I mean, what a move since earnings. The stock was trading at 111 just a couple of weeks ago. It's at 154. Wow. Um, another one to watch for tomorrow. Again, just putting it on the radar, um, putting it on the watch list. But First Solar has now given back um, a good portion of the of the of the candle. Obviously, it jumped, it gapped up on this, but um, you know the volume clearly not as high as it was. So you know some profit taking, but um, no, you know no signal on this yet. But um, I just like the fact that it's come in. Um, we'll see if buyers want to step into this, right? Least volume of the three days um, so far. All right, guys, that's it for today's recap. Um, have a great night, everybody. And um, I encourage you to check out Tribeca Trade Group. And uh, we start our pre-market session every day at, um, at 9, 10 in the morning, live session where we go over all the market moves. And then, of course, I send out a midday note too, uh, which is a recap of all the names that are on our watch list, um, where they're trading, where the trigger is. And um, I update positions as well as, chart, as well as charts. Have a great night, everybody.